From the outside, Wargroove has a lot going for it, as being designed around a spiritual successor to the Advanced Wars design that was popularized by Intelligent Systems for Nintendo's handheld line. And while this game does feature a lot of great additional content and some beautiful pixel art, the gameplay in it, while trying to adhere but be different, doesn't quite mesh everything together in a way that works. But for those of you who are new, here's a quick primer. This kind of design obviously is turn-based, with you battling against an AI on a map, with the map's conditions having various effects, such as this one being on Fog of War. The design makes heavy use of class-based combat, or raw paper scissors, as well as terrain. Wherever you are, whether it's roads, forests, mountains, whatever, will either give you a defense bonus or weakness when battling the enemy. The different classes will have certain advantages or disadvantages as well. Spearmen take on cavalry, cavalry take on archers, and a lot more than that. One area where Wargroove does successfully, I think, change or grow this kind of formula is with the use of the critical hit system. Typically, critical hits in turn-based strategy is frowned upon, as you're taking a very meticulous design and throwing in RNG. How this works in Wargroove is that every class in the game has a critical hit condition that they will always critical hit the enemy, but it is unique to that specific class. So Calvary will get a critical hit if they move six spaces before they attack an enemy. Archers will get a critical if they don't move the turn before to fire. And what this does is not only does it allow for an additional layer of control, but it rewards the player for kind of uh, balancing their army out like that and kind of gives you an advantage when dealing with superior numbers or unique conditions. Now you'll be taking over buildings as you see here, as well as barracks that allow you to construct more units. The other unique factor is the commander. In Advanced Wars and other turn-based strategy games, the commander or main unit is kind of a omnipotent figure on the map, but doesn't really do anything within the space of combat. Here, your commander is your most powerful unit, and it's kind of like the nuclear bomb equivalent if we talk about rock, paper, scissors. They also heal health each turn. They can also get a special ability or quote unquote groove power that builds up over time. Now, this does lead to some of my issues with the game that we'll come back to in about a minute or so. But, with the additional features that Wargroove has, there's a lot here for people wanting to explore more. There's a full-on map editor, online play, and every map can have its difficulty adjusted to make it easier or harder for you. And like I said at the start, there is definitely value here. The developers really put in the time and effort to try and make Wargroove as best as it can be. However, it makes some very interesting design decisions that I think ultimately come back to hurt its longevity. And we're going to talk about that one next. But first, as always, a quick word and shout out to our Patreon backers. Thank you to our Patreon backers, and if you'd like to continue this discussion on game design, check out our Discord channel, link down below. There are two big areas that have some issues with Wargroove, and the first is with the general design of its units. As you've seen over the video, there is quite a variety in terms of units, and you can see more of them on the screen now. The downside is that none of these units are different from each other in the sense of asymmetrical balance between the various factions. Every faction has the exact same number of units, the exact same type, and they all have the exact same stats. Now like we said, this was obviously done to streamline the gameplay and reduce the learning curve, but it really does hurt the tactical depth that you can have. Even the commanders only have one unique power, and that's it. They do not do anything else on the field, they don't affect their units, and it's a different feel from Advanced Wars, that the various commanders gave a vastly different tactical edge compared to one another, while keeping with exact same units. Now, 
What that means is that combat becomes a little bit repetitive by that fact. And this becomes even worse by one of the uh, map decisions the developers have done. And that is to make heavy use of triggers or event triggers when it comes to how a map plays out. Now what you just saw right there was I took over that barracks in the middle of the map. And what that does is not only does it turn the AI on, but it also spawns enemies on my side of the field that I have to deal with along with the enemy's army. Now that is an entirely fixed event. You can't do anything to get around it. You cannot prolong it. Or I'm sorry, you can prolong it by not taking that barracks. But it's a very artificial way of trying to make the maps more interesting. And it's not something that I like for this kind of game. Now, Advanced Wars did have events that went off, but it didn't really like completely wreck your strategy other than give you another little hurdle. Here, because my units were stretched out because I didn't assume the enemy was going to spawn back there, that makes things harder for me. It gives the enemy more time to prepare his base, it gives them more time to build an army to come after me, and I'm kind of stuck without having that knowledge. But of course, because if I go back to this map and replay it, I'll know exactly what to expect and will make things a heck of a lot easier. But that's not good strategy design. The player should not be forced to play every map twice in order to get what the gimmick is and then figure out how to get around it. This also affects some of the quality of life issues I saw. Because every unit has its own unique model, I would like the game to actually reference whether or not I'm attacking a unit that I'm stronger or weaker against. In Advanced Wars, it did feature that rock, paper, scissors system, but because everybody was dealing with a standardized set of units, it didn't really matter as much. I always knew mech infantry were good against vehicles, the heavy tank was just good against everything, stuff like that. But when I'm dealing with all these units, and all these character models I should say, it does get a little bit confusing. The game also features no checkpoint or mid-game saves. You do have the option to save on exit. Now, this was obviously done to prevent the idea of save scumming, or just saving every turn so nothing bad could happen. But Wargroove plays a lot slower than Advanced Wars. You can't skip animations easily unless you just completely turn them off. The movement ranges are very slow or very slow as well, and it makes maps take a lot longer compared to Advanced Wars or other turn-based strategy games. So if the gimmick halfway through a map gets you and you have to restart, you have to do it all over again. And these gimmicks will radically change combat to the point of almost being like almost two different maps. And I would have liked maybe even just like a quick save option when that gimmick takes root. In an earlier map than this, what happens when the gimmick goes off is that the quote unquote I guess boss character shows up and starts wrecking everything. Now, if your commander, who if they get taken out, you lose the map, is right next to that guy where he spawns, well, you could be in for some deep trouble without having any idea that it was going to happen. And these are all very nagging issues that does ultimately hurt Wargroove in my eyes. Like, I don't see myself finishing this game on my own unless a lot of people really want to see it. And it is a shame too because you can tell that a lot of love and dedication for the genre was put into this game. Again, I have to point just how amazing these pixel graphics look. But when we talk about a genre like this, not only is it a niche design of itself, but it's also a very fine-tuned one as well. And if those elements or if anything is misaligned, it really does hurt the genre or hurt the gameplay because there's nothing else here. You can't really go into a real-time strategy or a first-person mode here. So if anything does bother you, you're going to feel that every single map. But with that said, we're going to wrap up this video here. So ultimately, if you are really in the mood for a new turn-based strategy game, 
Wargroove is a good fit, and I'm sure developers will be working on quality of life and updates for some time. If you're also looking for multiplayer, again, this game having extensive multiplayer options is a huge sell for those people, as well as the map editor. But if the game starts to annoy you because of the quality of life or general gameplay, it's only going to get worse from there. But with that said, we're going to wrap things up here. I would like to thank the developers for giving me a press key to check this one out. Again, we really don't see too many examples of this design these days, and it's always great to have another. But thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out our Discord and all that link down below. And if you'd like me to take a look at your game in the future, please don't hesitate to get in touch. But otherwise, come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where we are in science of games. And this has once again been more groove. Until next time, have a good night. If you're looking for another book about game design, be sure to check out my first title, 20 Essential Games to Study, out now. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy things, be sure to do all the liking and subscribing that the kids are doing these days. Check out our Discord channel link down below where we hang out and chat game design and come back later tonight for our regular streamings. But that's it. And tune in for more great content here and on Game Wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games.